There is a supernatural world that surrounds us, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. You'll hear stories about this and so much more right here on Supernatural Confrontations. Our story today leads us into some very fascinating and dark areas, places that I really don't want to go and have no desire to see. But the reason why we bring them to you is to show that the supernatural world, both the dark side and the side of light, the side of Jesus, is absolutely all too real. We'll get into that and so much more. But first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Hey folks, L.A. Marzulli here for Noble Gold. The second largest and third largest bank runs in history happened last month not making this stuff up, the government is taking steps to guarantee all of your deposits. But that means more money printing. Thousands have approached Noble Gold Investments to secure their wealth with gold. Gold is the most stable asset outside of government control. Folks, we did it several months ago, and man, am I glad we did. Hurry and go to noblegoldinvestments.com and secure your wealth. Bag a free five-ounce America the Beautiful Coin if you qualify. NobleGoldInvestments.com. That's NobleGoldInvestments.com. So as usual, I'll just let um, our guests speak and, and tell us the story. I'll weigh in on the end of it. Thank you for watching. So Lisa, thanks so much for coming on the record. And um, something happened. Tell us what that was, please. Well, this probably happened around 2010 or 2011. I was a fairly new Christian before that, I thought I was a Christian, but I was into a lot of new age stuff. So I called myself a new age Christian is what I was back then. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I moved to a new state and married my current husband and the house we were living in, I haven't, hadn't been there even a year probably, but I had already been saved and water baptized. And one night it was very hot during the summer, about 3 a.m. I woke up wanted to turn the air conditioner down and I walked down the hallway to the thermostat and my stepson's bedroom was all the way across the living room near the front door. Mm -hmm. And when I rounded the corner, there was a little creature standing there and it was only about as tall as the doorknob, maybe roughly three feet. Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And he was wringing his little hands like this. And I got the impression, it's not like he was cold. I got the impression that he was nervous, very nervous. And he was staring at my stepson's bedroom door. And I just knew that I knew that there was something in that room, like a black shadow. That's what popped into my mind. That that's what was in there. And as I'm, as I'm looking at him, this is like all of two seconds, I guess, happening. He glanced over at me like he knew I was there, but I don't think he expected me to see him. And when exactly. I locked eyes with him, he just, he gasped. He went oh, and poofed and he was gone, just wow. poofed. And he, I don't know what his fingers looked like because he was moving them too fast. I don't know what his feet looked like, but his body looked like it was a grayish brown fur, very matte, you know, um, very uh, small fur, I guess. I don't know what else to say, like sort of like on a squirrel or something. Yeah. Um and he was wearing like a little tunic. And then his head had a big snout. And uh, it almost was like that. It, it was like the head of that squirrel in the movie Ice Age, the one that's trying to get the acorn at the beginning, sort of a wily coyote nose. Right, right. And he was just an ugly little thing. But um, he just poofed and he was gone. And I ran and got my husband. I said, we have demons. You got to get up. We got to pray. Um, so we prayed. And at some point I went back to bed, my husband continued to pray. And then our stepson woke up speaking in tongues. So he was, he was clearly battling something too. We had gone in to check on him, but he was asleep. And how old was um, he? So he was, I want to say 13 about this time. Okay. Maybe 13. He's very born again too, obviously. And he realizes that yes. 
something. Yes, is absolutely. Um, did you see, was there any eye, when you had eye contact, you remember what the eyes looked like? They were kind of bulgy. They were large, almost too large for the head, a little bulgy, but other than that, I couldn't say it was, it was, uh, we had some light in the room, like the light from the kitchen. We leave a light on in the kitchen. It was kind of spilling into the living room a little bit, but I couldn't, I couldn't get that good of a look at it. I guess I would say. Did you, have you tried to draw this thing at all? I, I am not an artist. I don't think I could do okay. that. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah. It, it's, a uh, tunic. What, what color was the tunic? It was like a beige or a light tan. It almost looked like, like almost like I could see the fibers, like a burlap sack kind of, okay. it okay. looked like kind of like that. Yeah. The hair? It was very short all over. Um, okay. Like almost if you touched it, you would feel that there was fur there, but it wouldn't be soft. Um, and and it was like a grayish brown. Sometimes when I think of it, I think he's he was gray. And then I think, no, maybe it was more brown. So I think it was somewhere in between. Now, when when he saw you, he was startled. Did did you hear anything in your head? Was there any type of voice to skull communication at all? No, I heard I heard him, but I didn't hear anything in my head. I heard his what gasp. Did, what what he did went, he say? He went oh! like that, and okay. then and then poofed. Yes, just like that. When in you the say same poof, second, what does that look like? So he's there. Is just uh, try to describe it as he vanishes. He, I guess the only way I could describe it is like he got lighter and lighter until he was gone, but it was very quick. It was just, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know how to, it, so here it's he is. not like. So here he is, let's say one, two, right. three, or is it faster? It was faster. It was faster it was than like, that. Just instantaneous. Instantaneous. So right. it's there once and then bam, he's out of here. Is that, a, is that a fair statement? Yes. Yes. Okay. If you could, if you could in the, in the twinkling of an eye, if you could remove yourself right now, that's exactly what he did. That's exactly. What exactly. He did. Okay. did, did he go through, uh, did he just vanish in his area or did you see him go up or sideways or down or anything like that? Or did he just uh -uh. vanish he in his vanished face? right where he was standing? Yeah. Okay. Vanished right where he was standing. Did you see a shadow from the bedroom that came in or anything like, did you ever see the shadow in your son's room or anything like that? No, but but when that happened, I immediately ran back down the hall to get my husband. So I, I didn't see anything else after that. Yeah. Well, and then you both prayed. Has anything happened since? Um, since that time, I think it was around 2011 or 2012, I did see something else, but it was not at our home. Okay. Um, I have a second set, stepson, and one night... We were dropping him off at his grandparents. I think we were having a date night. And so we dropped him off at his grandparents' house. And they live in a house built in about 1910. They don't live there anymore, but um, it was a very large old house. And uh, we, pull, we pulled into the driveway. My husband and my stepson went right into the house, and I was just waiting. And in that moment that they shut the door, I felt something jump onto the back of the car, like on the trunk area. And it was like the car went like this. And I knew that I wasn't feeling it. I was like, no, the car is, is stable. And I knew that it was in the spirit. But again, I'm still a new Christian here. And my mind is just going a million miles an hour trying to figure out, am I thinking this? Am I doing this? Is this in my subconscious? But I'm it, it's still happening while I'm thinking that it can't be. And I heard it go across the hood. And within a couple seconds, it looked through the windshield at me. And I thought, the first thought I had was, it's a dragon. And then I said, oh, no, it's a gargoyle. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how I knew it was a gargoyle. Because all I saw was the face. And in that second, I didn't know what to do. I was terrified. And the only thing I knew to do as a new Christian, I started singing, Jesus loves me. Oh. And okay. the little the kids song. And I'm like sitting there going, Jesus loves me. And I'm trying not to look at it because I think... If he sees me see it, I don't know what he's going to do. So I'm looking like this away and I'm just shaking and terrified. And, see, and as soon as I said, Jesus loves me, that thing leaped off the car. And then I'm still singing it, but I'm looking around trying to figure out where did it go? And he was running around the car real fast in a circle. Oh. And as I kept singing, 
he then realized, I guess I wasn't going to stop. And he ran off down the street. Wow. And so I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> I'm freaking out. My husband comes back and I said, I think something terrible just happened. <laughs> but I got to tell you. So I tell him the story. And he said, well, that makes sense. And I said, well, what do you mean it makes sense? And he said, because when my parents bought this house, there was a pen giant pentagram in the living room. No way. I said, I said, you never told me that. He goes, oh, I didn't tell you that. I'm like, when is that going to come up in casual conversation? I never heard that before. Um, so it, it made sense to him that there might be activity like that in the neighborhood. So I guess. Go to because there's a pentagram in the living room. They're doing rituals and things are opening up. Now, let me ask you something. What part of the country is this? In? This is in uh, southwest Oklahoma. Okay. Wow. Yep. And I did see the gargoyles again a second time. About a year later, there were two of them. And when we pulled into the driveway, I got the feeling that they saw me, but they were not paying attention to me at all. They didn't want anything to do with me. And they were up high. One was on a, like a telephone pole, electric pole, and another was up on the roof of a house. And they were just looking. They were just watching. They watch everything. Their heads are constantly moving and looking for whatever it is they're looking for. Oh. Um, so there were two, at least two. I saw them. At least two. Yeah. Well, there you have it. And um, I, I thank you for coming on the record with the stories. Um, you know, it's, we, we live in a, a supernatural world. And, you know, if, if people are dabbling in witchcraft or Satanism and there's a pentagram in the living room, that's an, that's an open yeah. gateway. And we as Christians exactly. need to pray against that. And, and cancel that assignment. I'll just give you, uh, I'll give you the last word and then I'll sign off. Go ahead, go ahead, Lisa. I think the most important thing is that when I asked the Lord about this, he said, sometimes you need to see. Yep. And this, this started me on a journey for spiritual warfare. He needed me to see that when we say demons, you know, we're, we always just say demons as a generic term, but I think he wanted me to see that there are lots more things out there that we don't know about. Um, and we're probably, we're probably never going to see how, what there really is out there. There's just so much. Um, and so it started me on a spiritual, uh, warfare journey where I've learned to really, um, I mean, I've gotten to the point where I can bust up storms now. I, I, the Lord told me how her, um, how tornadoes are demonic in nature. And we're having a rash of tornadoes going on around sure. the country right now. Um, and we think that we've had at least one over our house and through spiritual warfare, nothing happened. Our house wasn't even damaged, even though the winds were raging and we heard the freight train noise and all of that. And, I've heard and this. that pray, praying that Psalm 91, that's what does it. That's your prayer of protection. The Lord says, if you love him, mm -hmm. if you love him, he will, will protect you. Yep, he will rescue you. Well, thanks for coming that's on the record, Lisa. Before I go, I just want to say this. Uh, to the folks and of course we'll end this session but with a prayer um a prayer of protection but <clears throat> years ago when i was a worship leader uh, it was one of the last things i was in transition from a worship leader music director into what i'm doing now and so there was a transition period and i was a worship leader music director i would get to the church very very early it was the Malibu Vineyard. It's no longer in existence. And I walked up. There was this, this port, port call us a port call, whatever you want to call it, a, a roofed enclosure uh, where you would walk down to the doors. And as I'm walking there, it was about 30, 40 feet. I noticed that there's something in front of the doors that shouldn't be there. And I ran up and I could see very clearly it was a circle with a pentagram in the circle. There were candles that were still burning and there was a slaughtered dove that had just been killed and the candles were still burning. That was a ritual that was done on the steps of that church. And here's, here's where it goes off the rails. I didn't know what I know now, okay? I didn't, I wasn't awake like I am now, not that I'm like, you know, awake, but I, I'm, I'm in a different area, a different mindset than what I was then. And I went to staff meeting on Monday and I told them what we had seen. And we were, I was kind of laughed at, well, you know, don't worry about it, it's, it's all okay, blah, blah, blah. And three months later, that church had one of the worst splits that I've ever seen. 3,000 people were left without a church. Eventually, they lost the building. The head elder died of a massive heart attack. The pastor died, I think, two or three years later. Um, so one ritual. 
greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I get that. But when there's a covet involved and they are sending things, it's time for us to stand up and push back against that. So let me pray. Father, we just thank you for your goodness and your blessing. We thank you for Psalm 91. And uh, we say the Lord is our refuge and the Most High God is our dwelling place. And we declare that no harm will overtake us. And you'll just guard us in all of our ways and we thank you for it. Lord, bless your people here as they come and they, they watch these um, uh, testimonies because that's what they are. And let us not have a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Let us understand what it is and who it is we're up against. But greater are you that is in us. Let us put on the armor of God. Let us take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to discern between soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and also to judge the intentions of the heart. We take the sword of the spirit, Lord, we wield that. We ask that the blood of Jesus would cover us, watch over us, and protect us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Look, I, I have no desire to see any of this stuff. I don't, folks. I really don't. I don't want to drive down a driveway and see a gargoyle, stand, you know, up on top of the on top of the roof. That's the last thing in the world I want to see. You know, I, I have no desire. I don't sit there and go, oh, Lord, let me, I, let me see this, let me see that. None, absolutely none. I don't go looking for it. In fact, I pray against it. Father, let me see just what you want me to see. Guard me. Watch over me. And I pray this, that he would guard you. A lot of you come here and you've got questions. If you think you know Jesus, but you don't know him personally, then you don't know him. And it's as simple as you just ask him into your heart. You say, Lord, Jesus, I, I'm a sinner. I've done stuff. I'm doing stuff that I'm ashamed of. Come in, change my life, change my heart, change my mind. Change me. He will. He'll do that. I said that prayer 43 years ago. Not in the church, just in the privacy of my own room. That's all it takes. You ask and he will come in. Your life will never be the same again, trust me. But I'm not looking for anything. I just, I'm content with the ministry that he's given us. I'm content with supernatural confrontations, the people that come on. And by the way, if you've had an angelic encounter, please write us. Please get a hold of supernatural at lamarzulli.net, supernatural at lamarzulli.net. We've been sort of in the dark side for a while. I'd love to get some Jesus rescued me stories. Those are the best. Absolutely, those are the best. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I will be in Orlando, uh, in Jupiter, Florida, coming up. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm flying in on the 19th, but the conference is the 22nd. Go to lamarzuli.net, and you can get tickets, live streaming, all sorts of cool stuff happening. We are going to Israel, as I've already mentioned, so check that out. You can get all of our films, lamarzuli.net, or streaming.lamarzuli.net. Thanks so much for subscribing. We are nearing the 200,000 subscriber mark. That's unbelievable. Thank you so much for coming here on a daily basis.